Howdy everyone! Today I'm painting some really special models because these are the cultists from my very own Kickstarter for miniatures. I've done the Kickstarter before for the wooden painting handles that you see me using in most of my videos, all my videos. Um, but this week, Thursday in fact, if you're watching this video on release, you've got a, another day or two. Um, so this week I'm launching a Kickstarter for these very cool cultist models that come in a variety of poses. Uh, some of them have separate arms, so you can mix and match their weapons. The heads are all separate, so you can mix and match their heads. Here's one with a, a little torch and lantern. And I needed to get a bunch of these painted up to use in the photography for the Kickstarter. Check the link below. So I thought it'd be a great time to do a quick speed painting video of how to get these cultists painted up quickly. So you can see what I've got here to start with is uh, got some black primer and then I sprayed it red from above. I used an airbrush, but you could just as easily use a rattle can, you know, spray can of a red of your choice or really any color. The, the techniques used in this video essentially work with any color. I happen to be using red, um, but your choice of colors doesn't really matter so much. So black primer, sprayed it a red from above to get some of that kind of faded, brighter red on top. The, the cracks and crevices of the robe get a little bit of shading, and, and we'll accentuate that later. But starting with a spray of the main color of the model from above it is a very quick way to start. Don't get too hung up that you have to spray white from above and then you have to put contrast paints on top. Spraying red from above is a great start for red robes. Now, I've been talking about the red robes, but what I've actually been doing is painting the faces and the hands of the cultists in a kind of a muted gray blue. I'm using a Vallejo game color, but every paint range has a color that's similar to this, just kind of a, a bluish medium gray. And the plan here is to paint the skin, the visible skin with this blue, highlight it with a little bit of white, and then apply a contrast paint or translucent paint on top of that. You'll notice while I had the airbrush out, I also spritzed the flame portions with a little bit of white because I was there, but you also could just hand paint the flames white. Now, I really designed these cultists with painting them quickly and easily in mind. You'll note there's not that much skin showing, and more importantly, there's no eyes showing. I think it gives them a little bit of a cool, spooky look, and it means you don't have to paint the eyes, which is great. Makes it paint up that much faster. My goal here was to do a unit of 15 of these so I could show them ranked up in a, uh, a square style unit for Kings War or Old World or something like that. So for a next step, I'm gonna paint a little bit of a yellow brown. In this case, it's the Vallejo bronze brown, but this is another pretty basic color. You have a yellow ochre, ochre brown, yellow brown, that sort of thing. Most paint ranges have some sort of a, a yellowy brown. The nice thing with batch painting here is that the paints tend to be dry before we move on to the next step. This is a uh, Vallejo game color ivory, kind of an off-white, and I'm just gonna go on. I'm not dry brushing. I'm just gonna kind of loosely put a little bit of some white on the raised surfaces of their faces and hands, those models that have hands visible. And I'm using a wet palette here to keep the paint from drying out because I'm batch painting, you know, a unit of 15 of these, um, but I'm not really watering it down at all. The, the Vallejo, the new reformulated Vallejo game color, it's a nice consistency straight out of the bottle, I think. Um, and I like putting it on a wet palette just so it doesn't dry out. Um, if I was just painting one model at a time, I probably wouldn't bother. But what I'm doing is just kind of getting a little bit of paint. You can see there's really not very much paint on the tip of my brush. I'm not stabbing at the miniature. This is not a rapier. I'm not stabbing at the miniature with the point of the brush. I'm kind of wiping the side of the point against the raised surfaces of the model. And they're kind of harsh highlights, you know, white on the blue gray, but they uh, will do very, create a really nice base to put a contrast paint on top of. Next up, I'm gonna put a little metal on any metal bits, just using the basic Vallejo game color chain mail for this. Um, just a quick, easy coat. Um, this little cool little curvy dagger is from the Cthulhu themed add-on set that's part of the Kickstarter. You can check that out. There's a couple cool themed add-on sets. So yeah, just basic quick coat of metal. And not all the cultists are armed with weapons, but some of them are. Uh, so just hit any hit any weapons or icons, like this cool kind of chaotic skull icon here. Hit that with a little bit metal. And then what we're going to try to do is be smart with our washes and get down some base colors now that will take the same color wash nicely. Um, that way we can be generous with our washes and get a lot more work done at the same time rather than going back and forth and back and forth. So just kind of think about what colors would benefit from the same wash and go from there. 
So for that wash, I'm going to use one of Games Workshop, one of Citadel's new wash colors, which is called Targor Rage Shade. And alongside uh, the original, the Drakenhof Nightshade, it's quickly becoming one of my go-to shades. It's just a little bit more interesting, I think, than either Agrax Earthshade or Gnome Oil, which are, are very neutral colors. Um, the Targor Rage Shade is almost like a crimson brown that tends to work pretty well on most organic, kind of more natural, warm colors. Um, so I'm going to be putting that on the, all over the robes and any metal weapons and the rope belts and use that as the primary shade color on all three of those colors. I'm using a big old moppy sort of brush that lets me put a lot of wash on. And then what I'm gonna do to lighten it up on the raised areas is just grab an absorbent makeup sponge that I picked up at the local grocery store. I, I like this kind of lighter premium, I think it says on the label. Makeup sponges, they're a little bit more absorbent and you can soak up some of the wash from like the top of the head, the chest, the leading edge of the robes, any parts that you want to be a little bit lighter. And that can help just tone down how much wash is on those areas. And if, if there's any part where the wash is really pooling, it can help to avoid kind of coffee stains, water stains at the edges of the wash because the sponge kind of gently picks up the edges of the wash and, and helps it look a little more natural, I think. Now, you may have noticed what I'm not doing is hitting the faces with this wash. If you hit the, the blue you've painted on the faces, um, you may end up with shadows on the faces that are a little darker than you want. Um, I tend to think that the, the flesh contrast paints over the uh, blue is a, a nicer, less harsh shadows. Um, now, in retrospect, I didn't think to do this. It may have made sense to paint the blue after doing this wash layer. That way you could like really slosh the wash on and not worry about getting the wash on the face. Um, I didn't think to do that, but that might be a good idea. All right, so after that, the next step is gonna to be to put a little bit of a, a contrast paint on the skin tones. Um, we're gonna do that with, I'm gonna use Fire Slayer's Flesh as kind of my go-to skin tone color. I think it works really well over the white blue undercoat. The blue in the shadows kind of gives a very natural shading to our skin, especially folks with paler colored skin tend to have a lot of blue undertones. And so the blue white undercoat just really makes the contrast paint do its work a little bit better. So and I've said before, speed painting is not necessarily about painting it as fast as you possibly can, but it's getting results you're happy with as fast as possible. So you certainly could just put the contrast paint directly over a white layer and that would look just fine. But I think the time it, to uh, add the blue and white just makes it, makes it look a little better, especially on faces. I don't notice it so much on the hands, but it, it really matters on the faces. It doesn't, doesn't take that long, and painting the blue undercoat over the red lets you base coat with a spray, which speed th speeds things up too, which is nice. Now, best case, you would have, I would have put, and you will put some basing texture on the model before there's any paint on the model. Um, but, you know, life isn't always perfect, and, and sometimes you need to put it on after you've already put some paint on the model when you realize, oh, I forgot to do that. So when I'm doing that, what I tend to do is, is make sure the wash is fully, fully dry. You don't want to sprinkle any sand on the model if there's any, any chance that there's any wet paint at all. Because what you don't want is sand in the, in the creases of the robes, you know. I like using a thicker white glue for this. This is the, the called the Original Tacky Glue. It comes in a gold bottle. It's available at, at local, you know, arts and crafts shop. And it's thick, so it doesn't kind of run um, and drip and you kind of can put on a, a thin layer. It almost has, it's a 100% it's PVA glue. Something like an Elmer's glue is like diluted PVA glue. So it's just a little more thicker and paste-like and easier to put on neatly. It's also nice because it has less water. It dries a little faster. And uh, once the glue is dry, uh, what I usually do is just use an undiluted, some sort of brown contrast material you know, paint. Um, this is a Vallejo Game Express color, but uh, like a Wildwood Citadel contrast would also work and just kind of slop that onto the uh, basing texture. I'm using the Jolly Lark Basic Basing Blend that I sell, um, which is made from a natural ground wood product uh, so that you can, it actually soaks up the paint and the glue a little bit. So it, I think it takes the, the thin translucent contrast style paint really nicely. And it actually provides a little bit of variation because the lighter, the raised lighter parts of the grit show through. I'll give it a quick dry brush because I think it looks better. 
but you almost could just apply a brown wash to the basing blend and be good to go. And at this point, you certainly could call this model done. This is a, a solid basic paint job. But I wanna make the robes pop just a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is grab a, grab a bright red, and I did add a little bit of water to this. So just a, it's a little bit thinner, a little bit more translucent. I'm just kinda of taking the sides of the brush and swiping it down the long tops of the folds of the robes, just to make it a, a, little, a little pop, just to add a little extra sharper highlight to the raised portions of the robes. Now, this is very much a do it till you like it step. There's no right or wrong amount of highlights to add to the robes. Just you know, add a little bit to the, the upward facing surfaces until you're happy with the result. Let's grab another model here that has some just, this is kind of what I think of as the most basic cultist model with his hands tucked in his sleeves. So you can see a little more clearly here without the, uh, the icon pole in the way. I'm gonna grab in a little bit of this, this thin down bright red, just kind of giving it a swipe up the folds of the cloth. And you may notice sometimes I'm turning these models, a little secret of uh, painting models for photography is that the backs don't matter that much. You can't really see the backs in the photographs. So I'm definitely putting a little bit more time and detail into the fronts of these models and leaving the backs of the models kind of dark with just the, uh, the highlights that the spray can gave them, which actually looks kind of cool when they're ranked up in a unit. It kind of gives the whole unit a sense of, of directional lighting. So one more time, just because this, this is a nice step to show the, the pops of color, kind of front of the hood, front of the chest is a nice part to kind of draw attention to the model. You know, generally, you kind of imagine the whole model being a, a paint swatch. You want the colors to be a little brighter on the upper half of the model than the darker half of the model, kind of fade in brightness from top to bottom. So I'm putting more highlights on the chest and the hood area and just a little bit on the long swaths of the robes, which kind of helps create some dramatic lighting and shadows. Let's do that quick dry brush on the bases. I'm just gonna grab a small dry brush and some Vallejo Game Color Beastie Brown. Um, thumbs are a great place to wipe your brush off to get the most of it off um, without getting it all off. And just a, a quick swipe on the top of the grit. The grit is kind of sharp, kind of has sharp edges and, and picks up the dry brushing nicely. I'll put a link to the uh, the basing supplies down in the, uh, the text below too. And this is super quick. This is, you know, seconds on each model. And I usually try to leave the, the grit a little darker, closer to the hems of the robes. It gives a little sense that the model is casting a shadow on the ground. But like it says at the start of the Kickstarter, robes are always in fashion. The robes are super useful for wizards, monks, priests, cultists, tech priests, whatever, whatever you want to use them as. Um, so in this, painting video, I've really focused more on the robes, but as you've kind of seen in passing as I've been painting, there's lots of other cool details on the cultists too. There's cultists holding skulls, cultists holding torches, lot, lots of cool little details that you can mix and match even in the core set, even before you start adding some of the, the add-on sets like the Cthulhu add-on set and stuff like that. Finish off the bases with a, uh, a rim of the golden raw umber. I like this, the, the golden stuff for scenery and, and stuff like base rims where you're using a little bit thicker layer of paint. Um, it's a little cheaper per ounce. It's often on sale at, at you know, my local arts and crafts shop. It comes in bigger bottles. So that, it's kind of a nice compromise between something that's a little nicer than craft paint, um, but cheaper than hobby paint. And there you go. There's a quick step-by-step -step of how to get a whole bunch of robed followers for the cult you're founding painted up quickly. So uh, yeah, head on over to the Kickstarter link below. Check out the campaign. Hopefully we'll see you over there. Ask any questions you have in the comments below or on the Kickstarter. And uh, as always, we'll see you at the Kickstarter and on our next Jolly Lark.